Hello there, I'm Matthew Gardner and welcome to this week's episode of Mondays with Matthew. Almost exactly four months ago, the US declared a national emergency because of COVID-19. I thought that now would be a good time to take a look at how the US housing market has fared over these past 16 weeks and also let you know what you might expect to see as we move through the balance of this year. So let's get straight to it and start out with talking about housing supply. These charts show the monthly and annual change in the number of homes for sale in America and the data supports what I'm sure many of you are seeing in your respective markets, that there's nothing for sale. On the left, you'll see the total listing inventory was down by over 6% in June versus May and was off by 27.4% when compared to June of 2019. But what's much more interesting is the chart on the right. New listings in June were up significantly versus May, although well below the level seen a year ago. I'm sure there are some of you watching this scratching your heads and wondering how can that be? How can overall inventory be lower if new listings are that much higher? Well, I'm afraid that it can be. You see, although we did see a lot of new listings coming online last month, they didn't add to total inventory as these new homes simply sold too quickly. And this makes one thing very clear to me. Although the housing market is certainly not back to normal, we are definitely seeing some green shoots with sellers starting to, albeit slowly, return to the market. Now, we all know that a lot of people held off listing their homes when the pandemic hit, and that many are still sidelined. But these numbers suggest that some sellers are feeling a little more confident. I think it's becoming more likely that we will see more homes come online as economies across the nation continue to reopen. But, well, you knew there was gonna be a but, right? But that said, we also know that infection rates are rising dramatically in several areas across the country, and owners in those markets may well delay selling. So a broad resurgence of listing activity across the whole of the country, oh, that's certainly not guaranteed. And if you're wondering which markets I'm worried about, well, I'm keeping a close eye on several in Florida, Arizona, Idaho, Georgia, California, and lastly, Tennessee. But on a brighter note, there are some markets that have seen significant increases in the number of homes for sale. And here I'm specifically talking about Honolulu, San Francisco and San Jose, as well as Denver and Colorado Springs. So we know that supply remains tight. Well, now let's look at what effect limited inventory has had on list prices. And the numbers here are also not surprising. And you can clearly see that when the pandemic hit in mid-March, the effects were felt in the April numbers, with the annual change in median list price registering its lowest rate of growth since the bursting of the housing bubble. You'll also see that there was essentially no increase in list prices when compared to the prior month. Well, that was then, this is now. So you'll also see that we snapped back in May, and I would tell you that the pace of increase we saw in June, that represented the largest month of a month increase in list prices that the country has seen in over a year. So inventory levels are tight, and that's driving list prices higher. That's really a rather simple supply-demand imbalance. So let's take a look at the demand side of the equation. And here, the pending home sales index pretty much tells you all you need to know. Newly agreed contracts to buy homes tanked in March and in April. Again, no surprise. But look at the extraordinary bounce back in May. Now, I saw this jump and I took a look back through the data. I couldn't find a single month in almost 20 years that had a larger month over month increase. Demand appears to be back. So with list prices picking back up, well, it's very reasonable to believe that this will lead to sales prices rising as well. Unfortunately, we don't yet have the June numbers, but this chart shows the annual growth in home prices through May. And you can see that May's increase was pretty small. In fact, 
At 2.3%, it was the smallest annual price increase since early 2012. And on a month-over-month -month basis, prices actually dropped by a modest 0.7%. Now, the monthly drop in sales price was a COVID-19-induced anomaly. And I'll tell you that the raw data that I've taken a look at already, well, that does suggest that June will show a turnaround, with sales prices rising again, albeit modestly. But I am still optimistic the prices in 2020 will end higher than we saw in 2019. But it is likely that the increase will be the smallest seen since home prices turned positive back in 2012 following the bursting of the housing bubble. Now, I will say that there are other economists out there who are forecasting US home prices dropping. And you may wonder why I'm less pessimistic. Well, of course, as an economist, it's not in my DNA to have just one reason for anything. But if I was forced to give just one reason for my optimism, it would be these two words. Mortgage rates. And if we can find any positives at all coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, it's that it caused mortgage rates to tumble. So much so, uh, the rates are breaking record lows on an almost weekly, sometimes even daily basis. And believe it or not, uh, it's not too surprising. As you all know, mortgage rates tend to track lower with bad economic news. They tend to rise when the outlook is good. And although we have seen some good economic numbers recently, particularly the uh, June jobs report, that's just not enough to offset concerns over rising COVID-19 infection rates. And I would say that until new infections start to tangibly drop in every state, well, it's likely that mortgage rates will remain extremely low. And this will benefit the housing market and can allow home prices to continue to rise. The final thing I'd like to bring up is forbearance. And the positive news here is that the numbers of homes in forbearance, well, they're stable. And we actually saw 105,000 homes coming out of the forbearance program in the most recent weekly survey. The forbearance program is performing. And you should also note uh, that most owners currently in forbearance, well, they can extend it beyond the initial three-month period. So I don't expect to see any sort of significant jump in foreclosure rates in the second half of the year, and as has been suggested by some forecasters. So there you have it. We are exactly 120 days into this pandemic. And as much as there were some who fully anticipated the US housing market will have collapsed by now, well, it simply hasn't happened and it won't happen. Of course, we are still in very unusual times and the timing of any return to normal, whatever normal might look like, remains very uncertain. But I stand by my theory that housing will be a leader and not a laggard as we move through the balance of this year and into 2021. As always, if you've got any thoughts about this subject or if you have a question you'd like me to address, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, take care out there and I hope that you'll join me again next week. Bye now.